world is constantly changing and evolving. The familiar seems to slip through our fingers like sand, and a deeper, quieter crisis is currently taking shape. We stand at the crossroads of technological marvels and virtual connections, grappling with transformation that's shaking the very foundations of our identities. On this journey, we're going to delve into the heart of this change, and we're going to unravel the intricate threads of what it means to be a man in the modern world. Have you ever wondered how modernity's constantly shifting landscapes is affecting us? It's not just a matter of adapting, it's a matter about redefining who we are in the midst of all of these raging changes. And at the core of this transformation lies a big question, an enigma of what is the role of men and masculinity in modern society. And it's not just about isolated feelings anymore. It's about an entire generation of men, especially of young men, navigating a world that is both overwhelmed and completely detached. And this problem is real. All we have to do is look outside and see the rising number of suicides, the, the problems that men are facing in quiet desperation. You know, there is a very real struggle, very real isolation and a lot of haunting questions. How do they fit into this evolving narrative? Why does it feel like they're being left behind with a society that is moving so fast? The very essence of masculinity has been thrust into a crucible of transformation. And over the last decade, the media's influence has been both a catalyst and a reflection of this change. Stories are no longer just stories. They're mirrors that reflect masculinity's evolution in society. But here's the catch. These reflect Reflections are often skewed, incomplete, and very oversimplified. Masculinity has been depicted in broad strokes, painted with aggression and dominance, leaving little to no room for any kind of nuance. Men aren't just defined by these overgeneralized traits. They're navigating a landscape of complexities, emotions, and virtues that go beyond these incredibly limited portrayals. And this has created the search for a new archetype. Beacon in the storm, a guiding light for the lost. And during this chaos, men are seeking what has been known in the past as the Ubermensch, the one who carves his own path in a world that seems to have lost its way. This pursuit, this yearning, this desire is very much an echo of Nietzsche's call for a new type of man, one who creates value in a world devoid of inherent meaning. And so characters like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho, Tyler Durden from Fight Club, and the myriad of personas showcased in just a scroll through your TikTok emerge, and they attempt to find a new masculinity one that is both shaped and shaping the cultural landscape. Intellectuals, influencers, and voices from across the digital realm join in on this discourse searching for an answer that can resonate with modern man's quest for identity and end the quiet desperation of our lives. Despite all of these voices and all of this noise, there is a simple solution and a roadmap to help us navigate through this chaos. But before we get to that solution, I think we need to understand the journey that brought us here. And that journey is really marked by how we tell stories and how storytelling has changed across generations. Now, the evolution of storytelling can be really defined by two paradigms in the modern world. We have modernist and postmodernist. Modernist tales take a clear path, a set of values that lead to the objective good. Some films that really kind of embody this are like Top Gun Maverick, uh, the Creed series, and the TV show The Bear. They portray characters who embody virtues like discipline, hard work, determination, perseverance. And these stories present these values and then show the benefits of applying these values to your life. But most importantly, it shows that these virtues, when combined with humility, with self-sacrifice and a strong support system, you can truly achieve greatness and descend to new heights. And a lot of critics will argue that these tales, you know, they lack depth, they're overly simplified, they call them naive. And frankly, I have to disagree with that entirely, uh, but we're gonna get more into that in a later part of the video. And then after modernist, we have what's known as the postmodernist. And I think a really great example of this would be No Country for Old Men. What these narratives tend to do, and No Country for Old Men especially, is they question traditional storytelling and the very essence and value that stories bring to our society. You know, our heroes, they become more complex. The outcomes become uncertain and justice is elusive or sometimes just completely absent. Characters like Sheriff Bell, you know, a world weary sheriff who is questions the very nature of justice and constantly wonders 
if he's doing the right thing, or if it's even possible to do the right thing in our modern world. And then even the main protagonist, Llewellyn, you know, he's anything but a hero. He's more of an opportunist, a man who found a bag of money and is simply trying to get away with it. And even when he does try to do the right thing, like when he brings water to the hurt man in the desert, it does nothing but lead to more troubles, more tribulation, and more things for him to face. And so postmodernist stories, they really question the value of narrative and try to remind the audience that they are simply observers in the story. And they try to make the stories more reflective of the world we live in and not an idealistic or hopeful version like the modernist would. You know, in Creed, through hard work, perseverance, determination, by connecting with people that love him through his surrogate family of Rocky, of Bianca, he is able to transcend and achieve greatness. In The Barry, we have a chef who is simply one of the best in the world, going and finding people who love what they do and he is making them better at it by showing Showing them through hard work, perseverance, determination, and sacrifice of oneself, you can achieve greatness. And, and here lies really the main crux and the main issue with these two views of storytelling. They both do hold a lot of merit. You know, postmodernists are really great at pointing out problems, unveiling the flaws of traditional narratives, and shedding the light on how much more complex reality is and how our stories should reflect that. But dwelling only in this area of deconstruction, of questioning, can lead to a nihilistic abyss, a feeling of nothingness. Like, what does it really matter if in the end it's just complex, justice is elusive, and you know, the good guys don't always win. And where modernism is, you know, often criticized for its simplicity, in reality, it is a repository of timeless truth. Virtues that have guided generations past through the maze and confusing nature of our very existence. And, you know, they get criticized for over simplified truths or simple truths, but they are just that. They are true, and they have guided those that have come before us through the same questions that we face today. But in order to move masculinity forward, in order to move forward and know what it truly means to be a man in this modern world, we have to take wisdom from both sides. And it begins with recognizing media's misinterpretation uh, and embracing these time-modern lessons. You know, we have to be able to address the gaps that postmodernists have pointed out. We have to be able to look at the flaws and how we discuss masculinity as a culture and the narrative that we use in our stories but then we also need to hold on to the basic truth the timeless truth that got us to where we are now when it comes to men the most important one of these truths is self-sacrifice self-sacrifice and taking on responsibility in all of these stories the men truly achieve greatness when they are able to sacrifice of themselves for those around them when they realize it's not just about their journey it's about elevating those around them. So I think our archetype for men should be like a mountain. You know, from a distance, mountains are large, domineering. They take up the entire landscape. And yet they seem so simple with just a couple of sides all pointing to a summit. But the closer that you get to it, the more intricate it becomes. Different pathways, rivers, streams, trees, animals. It is a thriving environment of life. And none of the things that live on a mountain ever question where it will go. Regardless, regardless of its complexities, regardless Regardless of its overbearing size and dominance across the landscape, it supports life. And as men, that is what we are called to do. We are called to support life. We are called to be the bedrock, the foundation in which others can build off of. And that requires a huge amount of humility, a huge amount of self-sacrifice on our part. So men that are out here searching for meaning, searching for an answer of what it means and what we're supposed to be doing with our lives, our lives are meant to be laid down for others. And this doesn't mean literally throw yourself on the grenade the first chance it comes, but what you need to do is focus on the needs of others and do what you can as an individual to help fulfill those needs. Because through self-sacrifice, through service to others, through finding responsibility and even the most mundane and simplified aspects of our lives, are we able to truly achieve what it means to be a man and to reach the next level of greatness? So it really comes in understanding that masculinity isn't this one dimensional thing. It's all of these virtues and responsibilities coming together and integrating them into humility and incorporating them into our lives in order to achieve who we are truly meant to be, to achieve our purpose and our call. And as moving forward, our culture needs to embrace this kind of storytelling to show that men are necessary and that what we must do is not focus on ourselves and focus on what we can get from the world, but what we 
can provide and value back to it. Let's go on this transformative journey together. Let me know down in the comments, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I would love for a chance to connect with you. And until next time, remember, stay curious, stay evolving. And remember this pursuit for meaning and for purpose is something that we all go through together.